Hello, my assets. This is the second part of our topic, the accounting cycle. Just sit back, listen, and get your paper and pen because here it is. Okay, review muna tayo. Sa first part ng discussion natin, we started to learn the first two steps of accounting cycle. If you still remember those steps, you might want to like this video. So step one is all about transaction analysis. There, we recognize financial transactions through source documents such as official receipts, sales invoice, and check or voucher. The second is journalizing. There, we learn the different types of special journals, starting with sales journal, purchase journal, cash disbursement journal, cash receipts journal, and payroll journal. Also, we learned how to record the transactions in the general journal. Now, are you ready to take the third and fourth steps? I really hope so. Let's begin. Step 3 is all about posting. Posting to where? Your Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram accounts? Of course, no. All our journal entries are to be posted to the ledger. But before that, let us familiarize ourselves with a chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is a listing of all the accounts used by companies in their financial records. The chart of accounts helps to identify where the money is coming from and where it is going. In reality, sa trabaho, given na talaga ito, may mga established ng accounts ang isang company na kanyang ginagamit. However, with our future activities, exercises, and exams, the chart of accounts can be either provided for you or you will create your own chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is the foundation of the financial statements. This is true. Wala tayong magiging matinong financial statements kung halo-halo ang mga accounts na gagamitin natin. Now, here is an example of chart of accounts. These are some of the balance sheet accounts that are commonly used. So don't rely to this sample alone. The corresponding codes helps us for cross-referencing. The assets start from 1, liabilities, 2, and equity 3. Ito ang paraan kung paano natin gagawin ng chart of accounts. So be familiarized with how they are written because it will be your guide. The next one are the income accounts. The revenue accounts start from 4 while expenses start from 5. Pwedeng magkaiba-iba ang pagsusulat ng codes depende sa company, but we will use this sample as your guide. So now, what is ledger? It is where all the accounts of the business, for example, cash, accounts receivable, accounts payable, etc. are placed. It is considered as the book of final entry. Sa ledger natin pinagsasama-sama lahat ng cash, accounts receivable, accounts payable, at lahat ng accounts na makikita mo sa journal entries. But of course, you have to consider also if they are recorded as debit or credit. Then after that, we get the ending balances of each accounts. It has general and subsidiary ledgers. What is a general ledger? It reflects the totality of the financial transactions of a business organization. So lahat ng ending balances of each account, dito natin unang makikita. Magkano lahat ng cash, receivables, supplies, payables, revenues, expenses, and all other accounts. With the ending balances of the ledger, we can prepare the financial 
statements or the financial reports. What is a subsidiary ledger? It is more specific ledger. Halimbawa, ang accounts receivable. Hindi lang iisa ang maaaring may utang sa iyo. So, sa halip na nasa iisang account lamang na accounts receivable ang gamitin, may kanya-kanyang accounts receivable ang bawat clients mo. For example, account receivable from Henry C., accounts receivable from Lucio Tan, the same as accounts payable. May kanya-kanya silang accounts depende kung sino naman ang pinagkakautangan mo. However, we will use only the general ledger for now. And here is how you post your journal entries to the general ledger. We will use the previous transactions used in the first part of our lesson. So in the first transaction, this is the journal entry. We have two accounts present, Cash and Enrico Capital. Let's start with Cash. In the ledger, the account title is followed by its account code. Don't forget to write the date. For the items, just write the main thought that will easily describe the transaction. Next, write the reference. You may write capital letter J which stands for journal, meaning it came from the journal entry, and 1 meaning you can see the source of the data from journal entry page 1. Next, write the amount but make sure if it is debited or credited in the journal entry. If it's debited, write it on the left side and if it's credited, write it on the right side. Next, Let's work on with Enrico Capital. Please take note that we are not finished with the first transaction. So create another table for Enrico Capital with its corresponding code. Since it is credited in the journal, the data is written on the right side. Write the date, the items, the reference number, and the corresponding amount. Kapag wala ng ibang entries affecting the amount, pwede mo nang kunin ang ending balance. Next transaction, transaction number 2. Here is the journal entry. First, we post the prepaid rent which is debited by 16,000 pesos. Next, we post the cash. Unlike the first transaction, Cash here is credited. As you can see, we are still using the previous ledger for cash. May nakadebit na cash for 500,000 pesos as initial investment. For the second transaction, a cash amounting to 16,000 is credited as payment to prepaid rent. Now, Paano natin makukuha ang ending balance ng cash? We simply subtract the total debit and the total credit. Tandaan na kung nasaan ang may pinakamalaking value ng total amount, doon mo isusulat ang ending balance. In this case, the total debit of 500,000 is greater than the total credit balance of 16,000. We simply subtract them. So the ending balance is, 484,000 pesos debit. Now for transaction number 3. It's now your turn to try posting journal entries to the ledger. You may pause this video on this part so you can try answering. Now, there is a simpler but less formal way of posting. It is through the use of the accounts. We simply draw a letter T. At the top is the account title. On the left side is debit and on the right side is credit. The date is always there, but the reference and item are omitted. In writing the ending balances, it is the same way as the previews. The ending balances of each account are to be used in the preparation of trial balance. I'll give you the opportunity to try working on transaction number 3 using these T accounts. You may pause this video on this part so you can try answering. We are now with step 
4 or the preparation of trial balance. Lahat ng accounts with their corresponding balances ay dito natin ilalagay o ililista from assets to expenses. Ang trial balance ang gagamitin natin para makabuo ng mga financial statements. We need to prepare three trial balances, namely, an adjusted trial balance, adjusted trial balance, and post-closing trial balance. But for now, in this video, we will work on preparing for an adjusted trial balance. Here is a sample of a trial balance. The amounts in the trial balance came from the ending balances of the accounts in the ledger. To prepare a trial balance, first, write the heading. The heading includes the business name and the date as at the end of the period. Then list all the assets first, followed by liabilities, equity, revenue, and finally, expenses. Make sure that all balances are in their correct balance. Debit on the left side and credit on the right side. Finally, compute for the total debit and total credit balances. The total debit and total credit must be balanced. Always remember to double rule your answer. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to watch other parts of this lesson, feel free to subscribe to this channel. The links are available in the description below. This is Sir John Raymond Giat. In a life full of liabilities, always remember to become an asset. If you don't want to be an asset, then don't try to be everyone's liability. Have a nice day, assets!